Okay, so now let, let's uh, look at the security uh, user, the rules, um, how uh, the rules are assigned to the users and uh, um, you know, the security aspect of it about uh, how these rules are actually defined and segregated. Uh, since you've already seen this, you know, this is common across, and this is another topic which is uh, common across the modules. Um, so the rules are, uh, there are four kinds of, uh, or four types of rules. Um, you know, we usually call them as job, duty, abstract, and data rules. Um, so how are they divided? The division is something like this. Um, whatever data the user has to have access on is the data role. So that that's um, that rule. It's like bottom-up approach here, uh, the one that we're looking at. So the, there is a phase, uh, a phase that we normally use in uh, fusion. It says who's uh, going to work on what. Uh, so with that phrase, uh, if you look at it, the uh, the rules. Uh, the bottom, usually the bottom layer is uh, the data role. So data role essentially tells you uh, what is the data, you know, if it is uh, a particular related to a particular business group um, or a piece of data that the user should be having access to is what uh, the data role tells. Uh, data role sets up that um, context. Then we have the um, abstract rule. These are not specific uh, to any uh, you know, any job as such, but these are more like I you know the employee rule or the contingent worker rule. So these are uh, those kind of rules. Uh, so that that's you know the these are you know if you are uh, an employee you are given this rule because the moment you give this then you will have some extra privileges uh, related to this. Um, which the contingent or contract workers don't need to have. They don't need to have certain um, privileges. So then we have uh, the job role. The job role is uh, again, um, and this is more of um, what you are um, hired for is what job role defines and duty role helps you to do the job that you're assigned for. So if accounts payable, uh, if, if you want to call uh, accounts payable as um, a duty role, uh, accounts payable manager as a duty role, then whatever uh, the user is allowed to do using this role is what helps the user perform his role as a manager. So now if you look at it, see this, this uh, thing is the job role. And the privileges also make up the uh, job role because under the privileges you have the functions but it's not a role as such, it's a privilege. That's what we call. And if you also look at it, you would also find the duty rules. All right, so you see here, these are the duty rules. So job role is what you're hired for in the company and duty role is what enables you to do that job role. Like I said, abstract is either you give it, it is either given to a contractor or to um, an employee. And then uh, the data say a data role is, uh, or it's more of the context setting, you know, as a um, accounts payable uh, clerk. What is the data that you should be having access to? So that the data access set and the data role bills set that up. Privileges is those functions that are related or that um, roll up into the um, job role and the duty role. These 
essentially give you these access to those functions, those menus, if you want to call uh, in 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 Avis terms. So those are the privileges. Now you you uh, set up the user using this option. You come here, you set up the user. And in case you want to change or assign the uh, role, or you want to create a custom role, you can do it from here. Usually, you come here to define a role and add the user to the custom role that you define. Otherwise, you would use, um, uh, you would open up the user, query the user, and then edit the user. Now if, if I, um, let's take Casey Stevenson. So you edit the user to add the role. So you use this option to add the role. Project team member. You see those things? So this is how we add the roles. But for a custom role when you're defining it, uh, you want to, in case you want to add the user directly, you don't have to again open the user, but um, let me see if I've got any custom, yeah, now let's see this thing, it's a custom BI, uh, we are admin role, now for, usually for these roles, what we try to do is we edit them and we try to add the user here. So we go in here and we add the user. So this is only for the custom roles. Um, you could do, we don't uh, try to edit the standard seated roles. Uh, instead we follow, the, we go into the user and we add the um, role. That's the approach we normally take. So this is uh, regarding the roles. And once you set the rules, uh, remember I, I've, we've, we've already discussed this thing, the uh, data access set for the user. Um, we tried giving the data access set for this user. Um, remember for the US uh, business um, East and West, we tried giving setting that up, right? So that is how we give the user access. So this is, uh, like I said, this is again a common topic. This you'll be going through every other training that you're attending. So um, it's just good to know. Okay, so now let's start with uh, the project foundation. Yeah, project foundation. Okay, when... Um, and th this is more like uh, the base and these setups are uh, uh, that you should be doing um, essential setups or prerequisite setups that you will have to perform uh, when you're setting up this module. So these are the three uh, required tasks, um, the accounting calendar, the uh, periods for the uh, financial management and then the revenue categories. So these are the uh, three setups, but apart from this, there are there, there is a list. This is the entire list. So now let's look at these are the value sets. You know the um, value sets are uh, um, the same concept as in EBIS. You know whatever in case you want to have some uh, additional. Um, value sets defined under which you want to hold some values, you would use this. And this you would be using for the descriptive flex fields. Um, there is very less um, scope, uh, if you want to call it that way. So there, there's a little or less scope for us to really be using this unless, uh, of course, you have something uh, which the standard uh, doesn't really cater to that in that in those cases you would uh, want and want to set up these uh, value sets but otherwise it's 
here's something that we don't usually do. Um, one typical example that I have seen is um, or that I've done is in um, in the billing where I wanted uh, some additional uh, value to be captured. So that is where I did. But then again, there was a limitation um, because of which was it was not flowing all the way to AR. So we had to put that in the description and take it uh, across from the module. So usually we don't uh, um, tend to use this much or this is not much in practice. Um, so the you know general messages in case you want to pop up any messages and uh, foundation attachment categories just for the attachment. So. Thank you.